Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hey, what's up? My name is Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. From here and all around the world, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Live on the iOS or Android app, Alexa. Head on over to the Power 98.5 Satellite Radio station at power985.com. Click the bottom right tick in the bottom right hand corner. Send us a message. If you want to be a guest on any one of our shows, let me tell you what Lady T Resilient You with Alicia Pizzoni and Catherine and Company with Catherine Swain and as well as myself, Stephen Cuoco. Let us know. Head, you know, contact our team. Get on over and um, let us know what's happening in your life, what's happening in a world where we're always interested to hear great stories, whether you're a musician, you're an athlete, uh, a producer or even a single mom that has a story to tell. Let us know. I know there's a lot of authors out there that have been writing a lot of books during a pandemic. I'm a huge supporter as an author. I believe a lot more attention uh, needs to be given to authors outside of to where, you know, they don't need to be doing a whole pay per play scheme scam thing. Let's show support. This is why we're here um, as a public relations representative for 30 years in a business owning a satellite radio station, having my own show. Um, my responsibility and goal here as a representative is to the public, and we want to make sure that you get the best presentation um, and representation through media and journalism here on Power 98.5. We're going to play a quick clip before I get to my main introduction. A lot of you have already been prepared. We've got Hunter Armstrong with us today. And uh, we've got to start it off like this. So can we go ahead and let's get this clip played and I want you all to hear something of who we've got with us today. Murphy, Ress, Armstrong, Casas, lane six through three, all in the top 10 all time in this event. Justin Ress in lane five, got that high stroke with Hunter Armstrong, the magician in lane four, looking to get to the wall first. Hunter Armstrong defending the American record as he goes down to 23.71 and a new world record. Now, you've all heard that, you know, Hunter has only been representing Team USA for a few short years yet, okay? His accolades are impressive. 2020 Olympic gold medalist, world record holder in a 50 backstroke and five-time world championship medalist. After spending a year, all right, at West Virginia University, his performances took off following his transfer to the Ohio State University. In 2021, at the Olympic trials, he stormed onto the international stage by stunning the 100 backstroke field and claiming a spot on the team. That was the launch of his athletic career. This year, at the World Championship trials, he continued his dominance 
by clocking his first world record in a 50 backstroke, setting himself up to have an incredible summer. Recently turned pro athlete, Hunter came home a few weeks ago from his first world championships as one of the top medal earner for Team USA. While his talents as a magician outside of the pool have given him the nickname of the magic man, what Hunter is accomplishing in the water isn't magic. It's hard work, and he is just getting started. Hunter, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) You're welcome. I mean, you, Ryan Murphy, um, you know, Jamal Hill in the Paralympics. I mean, you guys as swimmers, you're really set in a stage. And let me get on over here uh, to your stats. You're 6'6", six, six, correct? Um, so, yeah, I'm somewhere between like 6'6 six, six to 6'8". Six, I haven't measured in a long time. It just depends on what shoes you're wearing. It does. <laughs> I, I got some heels. Do you have some heels? You know what? I'm glad you brought that up. In a little bit of history, uh, you know, research, because we all know, you know, a lot of these, you know, between rock stars and uh, uh, actors, you know, they're wearing like heels. Heels were not made for women. Heels were actually made for men. So, I mean, I don't want to do the Google search real quick, but those who are listening, Google you know, the history of heels and things like that. But it was incredible to, uh, to hear that story, but either way, you're going to tower over me no matter what I'm like between five, seven to five, eight. Um, I do have, um, inserts I have to wear into my shoes just to, to help with my, uh, walk a little bit to prevent bunions and everything. Cause I tend Uh to walk on the side of my feet, but yeah, even with, uh, what my inserts put in, uh, I, you're, I'm going to still have to look up as if I'm looking up at something and someone majestic. <laughs> <laughs> um, ma- magic. Why magic? Where did it start? Oh, uh, man. So, I mean, as everything sort of started um, in my life with swimming, um, we were on our way to a, just a YMCA swim meet and I'm in the back of a car with one of my teammates and he just shows me like the cheesiest, like first trick anybody learns and it stumped me. So I told him that I was going to go home and I did, I went home, I got on YouTube, I started looking at all these tricks, figuring out how we did it. Um, And I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And so I started showing it to like people at school. And then I I just like to make people smile. And some people really don't like magic because they don't like that feeling of not knowing. But a vast majority enjoy that, that bit of wonder. So, I mean, that's how it started was just a magician so-called um, showed me a trick. I liked it. So now I do it. You were at the uh, golden goggles and I'm, I'm, I'm going slowly here. Cause I want to make sure sometimes, I mean, I don't that my brain goes really fast. Cause I get excited when I do the, this, when I do interviews, I'm, I'm very passionate. I love this. And uh, I, I'm not one for mistakes. Uh, so with that, um, you did your uh, a magic trick here. I'm watching a video. This was back, what was it? December 7th. It was 2021 posted on your Instagram page. And if you want to connect with Hunter, see all the great things he's doing, go to Hunter Armstrong. And there is an underscore there. Um, you had some cards in your hands when you were getting interviewed. Is that where you started is with using cards or how did you start? So I, I do almost exclusively card magic just because it's easy and convenient. Um, if you go over to somebody's house, like almost everybody has a deck of cards. It's a little bit harder to be a, a magician if you're like, go over to a party or something. You're like, Hey, do you have a large box and a saw? Um, but everybody has cards. So a majority of my tricks are all 
cards, sleight of hand, interpersonal, just close up magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this was very fun to watch. Go to Hunter's Instagram page, Hunter Armstrong underscore. Just scroll down a little bit. You'll be able to find it. It's a red carpet event right there. Looking great. Loving the fashion. Did you do that yourself or did you get a stylist to help you uh, put that ensemble together? That was myself, but I do have a very special surprise um, for this year's Golden Goggles. Um, a great company based out of Columbus um, is helping me, and I built a custom suit with them. Uh, their company is Pursuit, P-U-R-S-U-I-T. Um, but no, I built a custom entire thing, custom shoes, everything, and that's going to be debuted at this year's Golden Goggles. Where is that being held? It's in New York this year. Ah, and is it a couple day event or are you one and done? Um, we'll be there for a couple of days, but the event is just a single. Okay. I have not attended one. Thank you for the info and for letting our listeners know. Uh, it would be a great experience to attend this, especially in New York, because usually everything's either here on the West Coast or maybe a little bit on the Midwest, but... Uh, yeah, Golden Goggles. You said that's in November, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the exact dates, Hunter? I want to say November 11th, but that information will start going out a little more. Um, it's still sort of new info. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, things could change, but I want to say it's middle of November because I don't want to conflict with any meets. I completely respect that and understand that and looking forward to seeing your fashion ensemble with pursuit and uh, yeah, don't hesitate now. And, and even towards the end of your interview, uh, let's go ahead and give them another big shout out and a drop and where people can head on over and get their custom, you know, ensembles made. I like the way and you capitalized it Hunter on your Instagram God first. And I'm seeing that a lot more often uh, with people's Instagram, really saying and showcasing, if that's the right word, or, or showing and expressing your belief. When you say or or write or, you know, put out there in the world, God first, for me, enlighten me, what does that mean? Why, why do you do that? Because I've always wanted to ask that question because honestly, I understand it. But that is, it's, it's not a very, for myself, Hunter, it's not something I take lightly when someone expresses that faith and that belief. What does God first mean to you? Oh, um, so I, I put it out there first off so that everybody knows um, where I stand with my faith. But to me, it just means you have to remember where it came from. Um, my, I swim for him. I, I believe that I was given this gift to do something. And I, I don't know what that something is, but I, I want to use my platform and sort of share. And I'm not, I'm not a preacher. So like, I'm not going to just share the gospel with everybody. I mean, I would, if I could, but I'm not very good at it, but I think it's important to recognize where everything came from. And that's why I have God first on my Instagram because I'm his child first and then an athlete. I really respect you for that. I really do. Uh, my parents who adopted me were deacons in a church, um, missionaries. Uh, my dad, my mom's not here with us any longer, but my dad, he's very, very strong um, with you know, staying true to what he believes in. And um, I respect him for that. And uh, I believe for you, you will continue to have balance. You, you present yourself in a way, Hunter, that is extremely centered and grounded. And you're only 21? Yeah, 21. 21. And when I watched your videos, it's... Um, it's very honoring and comforting, and I mean that very specifically, Hunter, to know someone like you, which there are many, that is not only in the world now for what our future means presently, 
but someone that's encompassing with your value and your integrity and your morals, your charm. And then even that kid, you know, the, the magic, the magician part, that's who Hunter Armstrong is all about. Um, it really is endearing and it brings my heart joy to know that you're going to be inspiring people's lives, most likely more often without knowing and knowing in the world. So I, I really hope you, um, recognize that and receive what I'm saying to you uh, because you really are, as my mother had told me, God does not make mistakes and you're perfectly made to be who you are perfectly in God's image. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> it's the truth. Uh, well, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's my goal is to go through life and live up to my potential and bring as many people joy as I can. And, you know, for, for kids, that's magic. I, I want to bring people into, into my sport because I love the community that we have. I mean, I think swimming is just, it's one of the best sport communities out there. I mean, I played every sport growing up, um, but swimming is unique in the sense that every, pretty much everybody I, I've met a few bad ones but very rare you can go up and talk to any of them and ask their advice and they'll watch your stroke your start your turn these are direct competitors with you and they will not hesitate to help you Mm -hmm. it was written recently and i'm and i'm doing my best to not paraphrase i'm all about precision uh comment uh, or comments about Michael Phelps and him having an advantage because of his body structure and the way that he is built. You had said you, you know, played many sports. Does swimming, the art of swimming and this sport work well for you, Hunter, because of height, because you're able to move more effectively in water? to your advantage because of, of being blessed to be the the size and the height that you are, or can your height and, and what you do, does it also work for not just basketball, but football and other things? Does genetics really play a huge role or is it also, and here's where I want to, you know, demyth the situation. It's hard training. It's nutrition. It's talent. It's exercise. Um, no matter how you are built, you still have to put in the performance. Isn't that correct? Yes, absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are absolutely genetic advantages that will make it easier for some people, but you cannot get to an elite performance without putting in a lot of time and effort. Um, But that's something that I stand true by nothing worth having is easy. Um, If it were easy, then everybody would do it. But no, there's absolutely a biological advantage, but it also comes with disadvantages. Yes. My, my height helps me with a longer reach and um, I take up more space in the water but I also have a lot more body to move. So my reaction time suffers. So it, it's all give and take. So there are advantages that come with having certain structures, but that also comes with a couple cons. Mm. So where we have to put in the work is not only just focusing on strengthening your weaknesses, but strengthening your already strengths. I appreciate that. We're going to take you down this memory lane right here. We're going to begin where we left off. And I would like to hear your thoughts from this moment. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. (laughs) Hunter Armstrong, everyone. Hunter, you are a world record holder. What comes to mind when you hear those words? Honestly, I... I'm at a loss for words, honestly. That is, it's something that I've always wanted. And, you know, I'm just, I'm over the moon right now. I just, I'm so blessed to compete at 
this meet with the best athletes in the world, and I don't think I would have been able to do that without racing them. You've grown so much over the last few years. What has been the focus that has gotten you to this place? You know, I, we have a great culture down at Ohio State, and a lot of it is this culture that we build of just friendship and constantly building each other up. So I attribute a lot of my success to my teammates and, of course, my coaches. Speaking of friendship, you had a nice moment there with Michael Andrew, gave you a big hug. Uh, how special is that to get to share those moments with your fellow swimmers? Incredibly special. Um, fun story. My first 50 backstroke was at Bloomington, a tier pro series, with Michael. That's the first time I met him. We raced the 50 back and he beat me. So, you know, he was with me from my first Olympic trial cut to my first Olympic team, and now my first world record. Well, congratulations. You are a world record holder. Thank you so much. How does it feel to hear that, Hunter? Oh, I've heard it so many times. I, I watch that video on repeat when I'm bored. <laughs> Tell me why. What, what, what goes through your mind, your body? I mean, you've watched it, like you said, so many times. But there's something more to that. What, what is it that you, you um, take away from that moment? What does it remind you of? Not only of the past, but... What are the details? So a lot of it is I, I look back at um, the people in that race was just an incredibly talented field. I mean, nobody other than one person has broken 24 seconds in the 50 backstroke. And in that race, we had a 24-0-0 and two people sub 24. I think like three of the fastest four performers were all in that heat. So that's just incredible. And th there's also a couple names in there um, on outside lanes that are going to be really, really good. Mm. Um, so I, I sort of like to see the their breakout. This is their stepping stone to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to watch it and look at these guys on the outside and – I'll, I'll keep watching their careers as they grow older, but watch their body change and how they change their stroke as they mature. And so there, there's the swim nerd in me that likes to look at that stuff. But at the same time, it, it was probably the best moment of my life to date. Um, I mean, Ever since the Olympics, my life has changed forever. It will never go back to what it was. But I, I like my new life. It, it lets me reach more people. And that's what I, I like to do. I like to talk to people. But know that that race holds a very special place in my heart. But it was what's more memorable for, memorable for me is the people that were there when I did it. Like my, my parents were in the stands. We had friends from out of town that came to watch. Uh, had all my teammates and Michael and Murph, Cassis, Justin, just all like really close friends of mine that got to be a part of that experience with me. You wrote on a recent post, I've made tremendous strides in this event since 2019, a 50.97. And I'm excited to see what the future holds. Next up, 50 back. That was posted on your Instagram June 21st. You're there with Ryan, who I had the opportunity to interview. Your generation is just incredible. I, you're really of your own as a Gen X. It is tremendously exciting to see what young talent is what you guys are doing. You're just so advanced, just so incredible. And, you know, we hear a lot more about millennials. Um, I don't hear much tinker and tanker and people complaining about Gen Z. I don't know what you go through. We don't know what professionals like what you and Ryan go through and, and many others in this sport and other sports, Hunter. But really... For what it's worth, when you get into your frame 
when you get into that pool, when you're there and getting ready before that competition, there is a camaraderie there. And why I say this is because even when I watched that performance, um, when we were airing it live, it's, um, it's very refreshing that you guys live in a, a generation and in a time where no matter what's happening in a world, there isn't a war. I don't feel a war that goes on within your generation and within what you guys are doing. I don't know everything, but as an 80s kid, it was very different. It was Motley Crue and Judas Priest and Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I mean, everything was hard and loud and you had, you know, poison and everything else like that. But there's just a softness and a kindness and 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 how what you do and how you live your life hunter in such a very loud and chaotic world and be able to be a champion and a world record holder. The blessings are like never ending and the opportunities of what you can do, even though you are human as much as at times you guys as athletes can be very much like a machine, go out there and do it. Don't even let yourself stand in a way. I don't know everything of what you go through emotionally and mentally, What I will guarantee you is this. You can accomplish everything. I didn't use the word anything, Hunter. I'm saying everything. And I know with your faith and in faith, you will continue to persevere. And I would love to attend one of your live future championships where you're winning the gold. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll definitely keep in touch um i'll send you all the details once i get it but no i i really like that you can achieve everything rather than anything i mean a- anything would be cool <laughs> but with your permission i'm, I'm gonna start using that I'll, I'll give you credit yeah please please <laughs> and then i also uh updated you know how they say pay it forward i'm like why would you want to reference that you are in a debt and that you have to do something it's all everything's by choice why don't you just reference it as share it forward i'm choosing to share it forward so there's another one you can use as well so you can do everything and you're sharing it forward i did that the other day did we you? were at a we were at uh starbucks my mom wanted a pink drink uh-huh. so i brought her one at work um but i i it's a long drive through, but I, I go in because I like dealing with people. And plus, the line was a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so however long ago, this um, this person had a gift card and there was two dollars left on it. And they're like, oh, I don't want to just take off the next guy's order. So I, I was that lucky guy. I got two bucks off. And I'm like, OK, you know, let, let's go. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you keep my card on tab or something. And they're like. No, we can't do that. So I ended up just giving them $2 for the next person. And, you know, I I hope that that next person did it. And that next person that I I enjoy that stuff. Um, Because one, you don't know what that next person in line is going through. That that small act of kindness can be, they could have lost their job that day. They could have just had a really bad day. They could have been $2 short and that can change so much. And we'll never know. I don't know that person that got my $2 off. That person ahead of me didn't know me, but it's just getting out of your, your body and your mind for a little bit to think about the impact you can have on other people without ever knowing it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I always recommend cash, carry cash, because, you know, tip however you can tip. Like, don't get me wrong. Help people share it forward. But these, uh, the servers and, and, you know, staff, you know, even like with Starbucks, as you know, Hunter, you can stick cash in that little plastic square bin. But I believe... 
that wherever we can help so these people can keep as much money as they work so very hard for, tipping cash is always the best. So always oh, have cash on you. You keep cash on you, Hunter? I do. Good. I, I don't I don't like to keep a lot because I'm also pretty forgetful. I'll lose my wallet or something. Uh-oh. But I, I, I keep cash because I prefer tipping in cash. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that Starbucks, they were doing a – they had two tip jars. It was Finding Dory and Finding Nemo. So I'm <laughs> curious what your answer is before I tell you mine. I want to know if I'm going to continue this call. Finding finding Dora or Finding Nemo? Finding Dora or Finding Nemo. So are we talking about Dora the Explorer? No, Dory. Dory. Okay. Is that part of the Nemo family? You haven't seen it? Uh, I know Nemo is the blue fish, right? Nemo is a clownfish. Yeah, he's a fish. I can neither uh, confirm or deny watching that complete movie i do know of it but i'm not oh, gonna be as you <laughs> be like yeah hunter i don't know um yeah uh, that's okay i put it in <laughs> finding nemo for any of the people in at home or in their car listening to this i hope you would have picked the same gotta go with the original um but you 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 need to go watch you need to go watch those they, both are really good are they That's sweet? Yeah, I um not saying I didn't grow up on Disney classics. I have. Um, I would honestly say that the the new cartoons are just very different. Um, nothing <laughs> yeah. bad. Um, but don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have no problem watching a cartoon movie by myself. No problem of it at all. So I'm writing it down. Right now, <laughs> watch Finding Dory. Finding that's D O R I. D O R Y. D O R Y. Okay, Finding Dory. I've got it written down. Then I promise Perfect. you, I just wrote it down. <laughs> What's next for you? What's next, uh, you know, this year, next year? I know we had a, a little bit of a conversation before we came on here. If it's not competition, are you looking to do a nonprofit? Is there a book? Is there a docu-series, whether YouTube or something else? Have you given any thought, Hunter, of what else you would like to do to share it forward, to leave more inspiration for other people to learn from you by? Oh, man. Um, so near future, I'm not nearly set up for any of those bigger things. Um, right now, I'm just focusing on having the best career that I can have with as much longevity as I can have with it. Um, more long term, um, my cousin and I are working on a nonprofit Um we hope that we can do it because I don't want to just overshare and then nothing happens, but we're going to sort of try to address um, the homeless issues. But that, that's sort of the thing that we want to focus on because, you know, every swimmer, uh, I guess a little shout out to Ryan Murphy. Um, he does the swim school with goldfish. Goldfish, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's extremely important that everybody knows how to swim. But I think Murph is going to catch a lot more people than I will. Now, why do you say that, Hunter? Oh, my gosh. The whole reason I got started in swimming, I I guess, yeah, this story isn't out there as much. Um, I followed my older brother off a slide when I was really, really little at a lake. I didn't know how to swim because I'm, I'm like little, little. And so I actually went down the slide and did not come back up. And as far as the story goes, cause I, I don't remember, um, a little girl pulled me out of the water and I was not breathing. But once I was handed over to my dad, I spit up all the water and started breathing again. 
So I, I don't know if I was, if I technically drowned or not. Um, and there, there could be some minor things in that story that could be wrong, but that's at least what I remember I was told. So, I mean, yeah, I went from drowning to where I am now and water's dangerous. Uh, I, you don't have to go out and learn how to swim butterfly at 200 pace, but I, I really strongly advise that everybody knows how to survive in water. I agree with you. And water can be scary. And a, a bit of a secret I'm going to share with you is I won't go in water that I cannot see my feet in. Um, I've never been to an ocean where there's like jellyfish and all of that. Uh, but even so, um, the relationship that I have with water is I respect it to know that as much as it will give life and enhance life, it is its own identity. It yeah. is its own person, life force. And uh, definitely, it deserves respect. Oh, absolutely. It It can be as relaxing as laying out in the pool and getting a tan but it can frankly it, it can kill and it demands respect and you'd better learn to at least float what sort of life and i'm glad that this point was mentioned and that you were able to share i mean have that memory that came to you and thank you for sharing that with us today hunter of course what does water do for you in all ways, in all aspects of who you are as a person and your own life force, what does water gift to you? Yeah, man, you know, you said it a little bit earlier, in such a chaotic world, just absolute peace. My parents hated it because when I was when I was an age grouper and swimming, anytime they'd be like, okay, we need to go home, I would just go underwater. And I, I'd grab onto the ladder and just stay on the bottom effortlessly. It's the most relaxing thing ever. When I'm, when I'm swimming, it, there's not a thought. There's not a worry. You're just in the water doing what you love to do. And honestly, I can't think of a better feeling. Mm. I like that. I received that. And that feels true not a surfaced answer. Um, I appreciate you, Hunter. And and here's one other question. All right. I've always known, I've always heard of you as Hunter Armstrong. But you're but you're all you're known also as Joseph Hunter Armstrong, correct? Yeah. <laughs> why if I may ask and only share if you're comfortable, why do we know you by Hunter Armstrong, not Joseph Armstrong? So I don't know. I could be wrong on the family member. I want to say great grandpa, maybe. Um, my great grandpa went by his middle name, which was also Hunter. So when I was named after him, um, I, I took on going by my middle name as well. And th this wasn't a choice of mine. Um, like I, I still remember being in preschool and always being taught how to spell my name, Hunter. So forever, I've known my name is Hunter. And so, yeah, no. when people find out, they typically start calling me Joey, but that <laughs> quickly that quickly goes away once they realize I don't respond to it because yeah. I'm not used to it. Mm. Now, when you, no. when you get married... Uh, it, is is your wife going to be calling you Joe, or is she going to be calling you Hunter as well? I think it's going to be Joseph Hunter Armstrong when she's mad at me. <laughs> does your does your mom or your dad did that ever happen when you were younger? When when I was little, yeah, I, I got a couple of those. That's when you know you're in trouble and you better run. <laughs> oh 
well. I, I, I'll be shocked. I mean, maybe, you know, the kid in you and, and being that fun-loving spirit that you are, I don't see how you could get in trouble. Maybe being, uh, I don't know, I'm assuming a, uh, not annoying, uh, just um, very apparent and just, uh, you know, allowing your presence to be very aware. But I would think that that would be endearing. I'd, I'd be shocked that you got yourself in trouble as a kid. Most of the trouble came from me being a brat to my older brother. Oh, well, hey, did he deserve it? Yes, I, <laughs> I, he did. <laughs> but, I mean, if you've seen, I think I have some pictures of me and my brother. Um, he got the football player jeans. He's built like a, a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we both played football, and we both swam all the way through high school. Um but we just are two completely different builds. So he, he will always be stronger than I am, but no, that, that was pretty much what I got in trouble for. Cause I had, I didn't have anything on him. So I'd have to come up with cheeky ways to get at him. Cause he would just punch me instead. Oh, is he as tall as you? He not anymore. So, um, he towered over me for the longest time. I didn't really hit puberty until close to my senior year of high school. And then I just shot up. So now I can like almost bend over um, and have it like my chest on his head. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's a photo that's got to be taken and published over there on up on Instagram, even uh, Twitter. Oh man, I'm not very active on my Twitter. I should probably change that, but <laughs> no. Um, well, come September is his birthday, so there will definitely be some pictures of us together. But most of them are from when he was a lot bigger than I am. What, so, would, what would be really great, Hunter? And I wanted to share this. It was a quick thought that came to my mind: him trying to eat his birthday cake and you putting your chest on top of his head. <laughs> You know what? Just for you, if I if I can remember, you have to hold me to it. Um, I'll, I'll try to get that picture. But you know, I I may if I can find um, find some. We just got back from vacation a bit ago at Universal Studios, uh-huh. and we were gonna recreate some of the pictures, but some of the attractions are gone. Uh-huh. Um, oh no, I did post it. Yeah, so there's. There's some pictures of me and Jake at Universal, probably like ooh, 15 to 17 years ago. And you just, so. I see it. You posted it six days ago. Pa- where is where are we here? Uh, park looked at a little different this time, but I had so much fun getting to spend a few days in the parks. So much nostalgia, so much speed, so much fun. And that's a great photo of you guys. And you're obviously the, we can tell, Hunter, you're the shorter one. Yeah, that, that one's me. <laughs> yeah, I also used to be blonde, which I was like as blonde as you could get. And then just as I got older, my hair got darker. I almost was wondering if you were a ginger because in the one photo, the first one, Looks a little bit maybe like a reddish brown there or something. Uh, so, yeah, I my my beard gets a little red. So does my brother's because um, Armstrong is Scottish. So we, we do have like we get some red in our beards and stuff. But no, nah, not not full on redhead. Uh, well, for what it's worth, you've got great genetics. We're going to be seeing that celebration of your brother on his birthday, trying to eat his eat his birthday cake however you're going to do what you do best hunter and your chest is going to be on top of his head and he's just going to have to deal with it (laughs) yep because you know i can at least run faster than him and you know if he gets really mad i just have to find some body of water oh man i can't wait thank you so much hunter armstrong uh you know world class award-winning athlete here, world record holder, looking forward to you getting a lot more gold around your neck. And uh, uh, definitely for that 
and I'm going to look into it, the Golden Goggles in November. Hunter, is there anything that you would like to close with to share with our listeners before we head oh, out? Oh, man. I don't know. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, th- thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, and heading on over to your Instagram, Hunter Armstrong underscore. You're going to get back to your Twitter. You're going to update. You don't have a TikTok. You're not TikTok, and are you? I, I do have a TikTok. Um, you know, we're we're working right now. I'm editing the videos. Um, my musical theater is coming out, and I'm think. Everyone's self-conscious about their own voice, but I may end up posting two videos of me singing. Please do it. Please. We'll see. You have nothing to worry about. You've got this. (laughs) Once again, it's your spirit. It's your light. As long as you continue to live and express yourself unapologetically and without criticism, you're going to be received either way. And you know what? Your voice could end up turning out and sounding much better and greater than you've anticipated. Just let your spirit flow. I may just have to post it now. You inspired me. Seriously. Remember what my mom said? God does not make mistakes. So whoever is meant to be touched by your voice and by the way that your spirit is flowing through that, the love and the selflessness, those are the people you're going to touch. So a very, very wise person once said, it's not about perfection. It's about progress. Man, you're, I'm going to have to steal that one too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And if you guys keep hearing the beep, beep, we've got coming up. Uh, today within about 10 minutes we've got tanya pinkins uh she is a tony award-winning actor singer who has starred in nine broadway shows i appreciate you tanya calling in early we're going to get right to you however we're here with you right now hunter and i want to thank you for being with us here um and with our listeners all over the world, live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. It is a great honor to have you with us here today. Thank you again for having me. But before I hang up, one last question. Yes. Did you say Broadway? Uh, yes, yeah, she um, she did. Starred in nine Broadway shows, including the original Caroline or Change. Uh, she Her recent... Film debut, which is an award winner, Red Pill, which was just released um, on demand. And um, what else here? Uh, Her medium essay, Why Am I Fed Up with Performative Activism from Black and White Theater Makers, has been made required reading at universities, including Yale. School of Drama. She's the author of the self-help book, Get Over Yourself, How to Drop the Drama and Claim the Life You Deserve. She's Tanya Pinkin. She's been in the industry for a very long time. Very, very highly uh, recognized and respected actress. Why, are you looking into getting a Broadway? If, if I could after retirement. No, that... that you. I told you I like theater. I'm, I'm going to have to find a radio or something to tune in and listen to her. You know, well, she's coming on next after you, but let's go ahead. Ryan, and hold I'll on. be listening. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can get her on the phone right now. Hold on, Ryan. Uh, hold on, um, Hunter. I keep calling you Ryan for crying out loud. <laughs> it's okay. Hold on for a moment. Let's see here. Hello. Tanya. Hi. Hey, hold on real quick. Tanya, so I'm going to give you a call back in a little bit. Um, I'm in an interview. You are live right now. We're live in the studio with Hunter Armstrong. Okay. Okay, Hunter. So call me back then. Um, No, real quick. Hunter, um, he is an American swimmer. He's a world record holder. 
um, incredible 21 year old. I've got you on live if you don't mind real quick, because he would like to get into Broadway. Is there any tips or anything, Tanya, that you can share with him? And, and he's on the phone. We're live right now. Hey, Hunter, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. So do you sing? Do you act? Do you dance? I do all of those. Now, unfortunately, I have been cursed with a bass voice, so um, not many. Why is that a curse? <laughs> well, most Broadway is written for at least baritone. And where are you in the world? I'm in Ohio. Assuming you're oh. from the United States. Yeah, I'm from the United States. Well, we were just saying that you said you wanted to do Broadway, right? Like that's a very specific thing. Does that oh. mean only Broadway or you just want to? be a performer in theater, musical theater? Just musical theater and or just theater. I, I enjoy acting, but obviously swimming's taken a lot of my time. But as soon as so he... I'm gonna, oops, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, he was announced in the next guest, and I'm like, oh, she sounds awesome. I want to talk to her. <laughs> okay. Well, here's a recommendation. If you have time, like, I don't know what your swimming career takes up to you, but there's an organization called the Music Theater Factory. And I would suggest that you like follow them online, check out all of this there. They have a lot of online programs because it's young people creating together. Um, and they make musicals that end up going to Broadway. Like a, there's a musical on Broadway that won Best Musical this year called A Strange Loop. And so I like the idea of, you know, getting in the room with who the people are going to be the next big stars. And Musical Theater Factory is a place where the next hot Broadway artists are coming up out of. Yeah, I'll definitely look into it. <laughs> yeah, and then if you get to New York, um, most of their events are like free, you know, um, you can show up for roundtables, you can show up and just perform for people. And as people are developing their next pieces, they use the people who show up to be in them. That's a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is. It's not, I mean, you know, trying to get into Hamilton might be a little harder. Well, maybe not Hamilton, because <laughs> they are looking for young people. Hamilton might be easier. But I, I always think uh, starting with the people who are up and coming is the best way. That's my, my thought. Thank you very much for the insight. You're welcome. I can't wait to see you on Broadway. <laughs> I'll have to catch you too, as long as you're still performing. And now here's the question I got for you. So I've been trying to work on my swim breathing because I can't breathe. And someone told me, another an Olympic swimmer told me, you've got to blow out through your nose and then turn over your head and breathe in through your mouth. And when I practice just standing and blowing out through my nose, those big bubbles are really scary and I don't like the way they feel. <laughs> well, assuming that, um, well, I should start with, you don't have to learn to breathe to your side as long as you can survive in the water. If that's what's most important. But if you're looking more competitive swimming, um, you just have to no, blow out. Just to be able to go a little longer than halfway across the, <laughs> well, um, just blow out very steady because the only reason we blow out is just to avoid water going into our nose. Um, so you, it doesn't have to be a heavy stream. There shouldn't be big bubbles. It's just little bits. Thank you. That, that will help. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. Tanya, thank you. Um, I'm, we're going to finish this up. I want to thank you for coming on. I love moments like this. Uh, you know, if um, Ryan has any questions uh, about Broadway or anything else, should he contact you by email or anything? Or do you feel that? Yeah, the, sure. Or, no, that's fine. You can give him my email. Okay. We'll go ahead and do that. So, um, uh, Tanya, I'm going to let you go. We're going to close out soon with Hunter, and I'll give you a call right back. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. See that, Hunter? You never know. You see what God did? He aligned that perfectly to have Tanya. Okay. Exactly. It's crazy. An award-winning actress whose interview is coming up right after yours, and you're wanting to know more about Broadway. Um, hold the line. We're going to close out, but I'm going to definitely text you and share with you Tanya's information. 
And this Please. way you've got direct access to somebody that's been in the industry for decades. And what I'm going to do right now, let me pull up Tanya. Ink in. And you, you could potentially recognize her. She has been in the industry for a very, very long time. Um, you'll, I'll be shocked if you don't recognize her face, but I wouldn't be shocked if you don't, but I'm just letting you know, um, she's an American actress and filmmaker. Her award-winning debut film, Red Pill, was an official selection at the 2021 Pan-African Film Festival and won Best Black Lives Matter feature. Um, she will be an awesome connection. There, This was serendipitous, and I like the way the connection flowed between you two, and so um, this was set up for a reason. Well, there you go. When you put things in God's hands, that's how it happens. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what the world is now. Just make connections with as many people as you can. Absolutely. Uh, who would you like to give a shout out to, Hunter? Oh, man. Man, you put me on the spot again. You know what? <laughs> let's let's go with uh, my coach, Mabau. Um, <laughs> um, I'll have to send him the link to this one because he's actually on a plane right now heading to nationals in California. But, you know, he is one of the best coaches I've had. Um, and, you know... After retirement, I hope to coach, assuming I don't make it to Broadway now. Um, but, you know, I've seen firsthand how influential and impactful coaches have been on my life. And so that's what I want to do is I want to coach. What we're going to do, so you know, um, write it down. I know you've got a good memory. Uh, we're going to re-air this episode. For tomorrow, Monday, July 25th, we're going to do 2 p.m. Eastern, okay? All things Hunter Armstrong. Thank you, Tanya Pinkins, for sharing your advice. I will share with you, Hunter, her information. She gave permission. Find out more about Broadway, and, and you, you're going to be in really, really great hands with her. I mean, she is a signature of this industry when it comes to Broadway and acting. And then also knowing that she's a filmmaker. Um, I really liked the vibe and the flow of, of how both of your energies worked. Um, so you're going to get that by text. Also, Hunter, I'm going to my Instagram right now. And I am going to find you. And I like to connect with people once I've established a really good or great connection as I have with you to really feel good knowing that I'm not just following and connecting with people on a surface level, that there's a deeper purpose. So boom, I'm now following you now on Instagram. And then when we get, um, you know, additional content, uh, we're going to create a little mini clip from this interview and everything. We'll be able to tag you and send, you know, some stuff over to you and everything else to, um, help more with promotion and getting the word out there of what a great person, man, and professional that you are, Hunter. Well, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, any other closing thoughts? No, I think we're good. I've taken up enough of your time and Tanya's waiting for you. All right. No worries. So Hunter, real quick, stay on the line. We're closing out. Thank you to everyone for being with us here live on air with Stephen Quilk on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We've got Tanya Pinkins coming up. All right. Within a couple minutes, she is an American actress and filmmaker. Her award winning debut film, Red Pill was an official selection at the 2021 Pan-African Film Festival, won the best Black Lives Matter feature. She's got more awards, more recognition, more honoraries within the industry as a professional woman in film, television, and Broadway. I am very honored. She's coming up within a couple more minutes. Stay live, stay tuned. And uh, remember, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, all great things of Hunter Armstrong live. This episode airs power 985.com. Download the app. Tune in on Alexa. We appreciate you. We love you. And thank you for being part of the power 98.5 satellite radio family. Have a great week.
Friend us on your socials and let's connect.